Well, first they marched tens of thousands of people packing the streets of Seattle yesterday for the Women's March 2.0. Nice big crowds yesterday. And now comes more of the hard work, channeling that outrage into action and hopefully change. And today, panels and events on women's rights were held all across Seattle. But uh, women's rights are more than just one thing. And joining me now are Fleur Larson and Aparna Ray. And they were part of a panel on intersection, uh, intersectional feminism, uh, if I can speak today, presented <laughs> by the uh, Seattle Women's Marching Forward. And Fleur, we were talking a minute ago, and we have three panels. And you helped organize, but you also moderated. And so tell me a little bit about them. Yeah, I moderated three panels on intersectional feminism, one at Casa Latina, and one at the Riveter, and one at Finney Neighborhood Association. And they were really about bringing women of color and white women together to talk about what was, has been historically missing from the women's movement. Uh, feminism has been exclusively um, excluding women of color historically. So it was a chance to talk, look at the racism within the women's movement and really come together and see what can we do to really create a strong women's movement that includes liberation for everyone. What kind of feedback did you get from them? Yeah, well, I mean, people self-selected and they came to them because right. they wanted to. Um, I mean, it was really about healing and reconciliation and uh, where do you find your power? Uh, and how do we uplift and support um, all, of, all of each other? So Parna, you're the director of the programs at the Women's Funding Alliance. Um, what exactly is, and I think a lot of people around the country had problems wrapping uh, their minds around what was going on and what, what exactly are, are all these marches about? Because even mm -hmm. we talked about it last night, you, you ask 100 different people and they're marching for 100 different mm -hmm. reasons. But there is, some, there is some common ground there. So what exactly is the intersectional feminism? Ah, oh, great question. I mean, it's, it's a phrase that was coined um, 30 years ago by a professor at the University of Chicago named uh, Kimberly Crenshaw. And intersectionalism is basically identifying that we live at the really messy and complex intersection of not only our gender, but also our race and ethnicity, um, ability, disability, immigration status, right? And so what Floor was saying earlier about the women's movement being a lot about white women's issues, um, this whole intersectional feminism lens is saying, hey, there's so much more to gender that there are layers of oppression. Sure. Um, and how can we be really inclusive as we move forward? It, and, and what are you finding with that? I mean, even from mm -hmm. last year to this year, do you feel as though there has been movement in that, in the right direction? I think that, you know, that the first step is acknowledging that something is wrong. So I think the, the marches last year, they were huge, they were enormous. And I was in Iowa with my family when they happened. And I even in Des Moines, there was a huge march. And so I think that, that the marches brought a layer of awareness. And I think that for those of us that work at women's funds or women's rights groups across the organization, we're starting to talk a little bit differently. For instance, you know, an example that I always give is when we talk about pay equity, we will say that, you know, women earn 80 cents to a, a dollar that a white man earns. But what we don't talk about is the fact that African American and Latino women make 65 and 55 cents respectively. Right, so I think what we're starting to do now is we're starting to disaggregate the conversation. We're saying, yeah, so white women are making 80 cents and like, that is not great. Well, that, that's actually not good at all. But here's somebody that's making 55 cents to the dollar and we should be really ashamed and build solutions together. So we started out last year making a statement and it sounds like we're still branching out those conversations mm -hmm. a little bit to kind of, kind of narrow it down. But again, we talked about the, the different reasons um, and I, was it, is it, um, how can I put this? Is it confusing for you guys when you're organizing something like this? Or do you have a tough time explaining to the people who uh, want to march um, why everybody's marching? Or is it kind of, you know, come one, come all? Well, everybody is not marching. Well, so I, not everybody, this is true. <laughs> so today was focused on the day of action. Mm -hmm. It was really about, you know, marching is great. It makes a statement. It, people get um, hope and mm -hmm. excitement from being a large group of people. Uh, but also we need to move into action. So today there were hubs all over the city with workshops, trainings. How can we really channel this energy and this like momentum into action, looking at policies, looking at procedures, looking at relationships on the personal and the professional level. Uh, the panels were about how do we connect as women in relationship building, uh, but there was a lot, of going, a lot going on today around action specifically. So moving out, you know, what's beyond, what's the next step beyond marching? And that's where all the, all the work takes place, it mm -hmm, sounds like. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Flora and Aparna, thank you so much for yeah, coming thank in. You. And, and for having us. keep us posted on how this uh, yeah. transpires. Over the, it'd be curious talking about it next year again and see Great. where we get from here to Hopefully there. Hopefully more than 55 cents. <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, coming up in Health News. Uh,